I'll just read this paragraph and then I'll skip ahead a bit. Of all the limestone mountains along the eastern front of the Canadian Rockies, Yamnuska is the longest, straightest, steepest cliff. For this reason, Yamnuska has been the home to ravens, always, always. And it was homeward along Yamnuska's great south face that Zack and Colin flew, carrying a hiker's discarded lunch. And I bet a lot of you remember what happened after that. I'm going to skip ahead here, and I'm going to talk about Colin sitting by himself, sitting alone on a dead branch atop the pine right here at Raven's End. Brilliantly sunny a few hours ago, the day was now going dark. A bank of low clouds had moved in from the east, tiny drops of rain leaving black speckles on the ground. The humans pulled their jackets from their backs. Colin was amazed to note that humans carried extra plumages with them. And they talked excitedly, looking up and pointing. At the first rumble of thunder, they hastily packed up, called the dog, and headed back the way they had come. The rain started in, in earnest, and Colin had Raven's End to himself. He enjoyed the sensation of the drops hitting his body. They rolled off rather than penetrating, for Colin's feathery covering was practically waterproof. 
Opening his bill and leaning his head back, he caught some rain directly from the sky. It tasted of clouds. Lightning hit a neighboring peak. It sent a wave of thunder bumping through the valley, rolling back and forth between the cliffs. Colin looked up. The undersides of the clouds had joined themselves into a solid ceiling as gray as the rock, and now the ceiling was coming down. It touched the top of Yamuska, and it crept farther down the cliffs. Tendrils of mist caressed the pinnacles and explored the corners. A gust of wind carried the mist over Raven's End, and Colin's perch was suddenly in fog. He could hear the dog barking now far below, but the fog was so thick that he couldn't see beyond the next tree. The world became very small. Colin felt as if the mist were alive. Its cold presence brushed by him, stroking his wings, curling between his toes, throwing tiny flecks of moisture into his eyes. He blinked. And then the fog started to to speak to them. There is a mountain, it said softly, a mountain with feathers. The voice of the fog was wispy, the sound of vapor moving over stone. It came from everywhere at once, and it kept saying the same thing over and over. There is a mountain, a mountain with feathers, feathers on the mountain. The mountain has feathers, feathers on the mountain. There are feathers. This message from the mist Colin knew was meant for him. He knew it more surely than he knew anything else, which was comforting considering how little he understood of the world around him. As the voice went on, he tried to imagine what a mountain with feathers would look like. An image flickered through his mind, but he couldn't see it clearly. He grew sleepy, his eyes closed. He tucked his head under his wing and dozed off in the rain. Thank you. Fantastic. Yeah. Yay. Woo. Woo. Remember that part? Let's go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on? Okay, so three, two, one. <laughs>